we're out here this morning a cool front come in and it's windy so we thought we'd just come inside do some stuff I got a another uh, thing I'm carving I'm gonna work on it's like this one I'm gonna make another one and uh, I just want to say that people that sent me some uh, something in that uh, PayPal if you uh, email me I'll send you one of these for a token of our appreciation it's not much but uh, it just shows that we appreciate you doing that so I'll use them as giveaways too and I was thinking to make these got two holes to make a one board and it'd be like a six hole pencil holder and some of them it'd be like a little village and some of them be up taller and it'll have uh, six holes I like to do that make like a little village of it oh. and I wanted to show you something too uh, you know Bill found that horseshoe out there in, in the desert and I'm sure it's a, either donkey or mule horseshoe and I'll show you the difference okay well the, the, the bigger one is <clears throat> is a, off of one of our younger horses it's, that's the size ought or zero if you want to call it but they call it ought uh, so that donkey that's probably a double ought well you see how round the hoof is on a horse like that and on donkeys and mules they come around but then they go straight back their hoof and uh, these are grabbers for the the soil so they don't slide they got grip and this is what they sit on they'll put their foot on top of this and uh, when they walk these grab we don't use them do we we don't use them no more no I don't with them it. grippers no the curts yeah no uh, I bought them like that before but yeah but uh this looks pretty old I don't I hadn't well we we've been out here 20 years or 19 years and we never seen a donkey or mule out, out there here by the house. yeah no I know uh, somebody's been out there but anyway I want to show you the difference on that and I want to talk about my Windows movie maker I did see somebody make a comment to somebody else saying Amazon or is it Amazon? Windows huh Windows is it Windows Microsoft I guess I anyway they're gonna get rid of the movie maker and I don't know if that's true or not but uh, it's it was a recent comment and uh, that's what I use and I'm quite used to it now but if anybody else has a, a program to do your videos uh, you let editing. me know huh editing, editing yeah uh, I hope uh, I can find something not too complicated uh, but I would like to start um, doing a, another type of editing because I see that people doing uh, you know putting more stuff on their videos whereas that movie maker is limited but if I uh, don't get used to something pretty soon if they shut down and if you don't see me putting films up is because I'm not you know don't have nothing and I don't want to get caught uh, without another program so uh, I'd appreciate it if y'all could let me know about any of them I'm sure everybody's got different kinds but I'm not really sure on that Windows mo movie maker or just somebody's recent comment that uh, they was going to shut it down so got me quite worried about it so what I'm going to do in here 
<coughs> I'm going to sand this part here by hand and smooth it down. Uh, I'm going to sand paper out, uh, thing outside. We can smooth it like that, but this in here, i got to smooth it down here. So, we're just inside, and I'll show you something in a minute. Yeah, look who's tired. <laughs> uh, I think Bill wore him out. He's still tired. Bill, she wants to help. And, she, and Ellen said, uh, it looked like Bill was ha uh, glad to see you coming home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, she loves her daddy. Here. But they was all glad to see him. We have a big welcome uh, going on when we come home. There she goes. That's going to be hard working with her up there. I'm going to take a break. Yeah. I get lots of breaks. We were sitting here a while ago and we were talking about uh, mules and donkeys uh, stories. And uh, this one we was talking about, was that uh, a Gila ranger that lost his donkey? Well, it was a Forest Service <clears throat> donkey or a mule. I, I don't remember. But it was in it a, was a Gila. A, mule, a small mule. Yeah. But, uh, and things like that happen, especially in a big area like that. It got loose or come untied or whatever. <clears throat> it wandered off, but it was gone for... Five, they lost track of five years. For five years. Yeah. Uh, they somehow or another they backtracked. It eventually found its way back. But it uh, went several miles north of the Gila Wilderness, or on the edge of the Gila Wilderness to the north of it, and stayed uh, uh, a, a Mexican family that had a little farm or ranch took it in. And uh, it's, he's, uh, I don't know stayed, how they found out that part of it. But yeah, it, they, that donkey stayed with that family for three years. Three years. And then it got away or left again and made its way back to the Forest Service. Several, several miles, uh, probably, uh, I believe it was probably 80 or 90 miles. Well, there was two years of it. Yeah. They don't know where it went. Yeah, there was two years it was just unaccounted for, but they they inquired, I, uh, uh, I believe the story, it's been a long time since I heard it, uh, in different areas to see if anybody's seen it, this, this family uh, of uh, farmers or ranchers, whatever they were, they had a small spread. Well, that uh, there was a horse ranger, he seen that donkey out there walking, and he had a horse trailer. So he stopped and looked at it and had a, I think it was a U.S. brand. It had U.S. Force, well, U.S. I think had on it. Yeah, had brand that's on it. They, they used to mark their stuff. I don't know how they do it now, but that's what they used to mark their stuff. And, and he seen, you know, it was friendly enough. And I think it didn't come up to him. So he opened the back of that trailer up and that donkey just hopped right in there and off it went. We were talking about this other story this morning about this mule hiding from the Indians. Well, what it is, it, uh, it came out of a book that I read. You can find it at the library or bookstore if you like that kind of, uh, it's about uh, early days out here. It's called Black Range Tales. And we've been in the Black Range a lot. It's, it's a group of mountains that are real dark and rugged and they, they call them anyway, Black Range. Uh, uh, this guy that, uh, it's kind of like a journal diary, this fellow by the name of James McKenna. Uh, when he was young, he uh, came out west, uh, like a lot of Easterners did. And he first came to, I think, Santa Fe, on the Santa Fe Trail. And then he came south, and he talks about his trip, uh, what they ate along the way. They ate a lot of jackrabbits. That was, that was a real staple. Uh, there was a lot of them. And he ended up over in the Gila Wilderness, what is now the Gila Wilderness, and uh, he became a trapper. And I think he became later became a scout, but uh, basically he became a trapper. 
uh, for beaver. Uh, there was a lot of beaver over there. He was uh, back in the in the wilderness area. And this was back in the uh, 1800s when there was uh, this, the Apaches still had some freedom. He was back in there uh, along one of the forks of the Gila River, and he heard somebody coming. So he, being wary, he got off the trail and back in some brush. And sure enough, it was uh, a band of Indians, and they were on a raid. Uh, what he said. Uh, a lot of times, the Apaches back then walked. They could walk and run for miles and miles. They were really they had endurance they, they did go to horses but they, they they could travel on foot they were good at it uh, as he watched them go by he was being real quiet but he sensed that something was behind him according to him this is in the book and uh, he looked around and there was it was either a donkey or a mule I don't remember it's been a long time since I read the book but it was back in behind him in the brush, and he said it gave him a look like, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> they eat mules. <laughs> and uh, the, I believe the, the mule went with him after they were clear to, to leave, but the mule didn't want to be recaptured by, by the Indians because, uh, uh, and it was a matter of survival for them uh, on horses and mules. They would uh, use them, and if, if one went down, they'd eat it, which, you know, that's just, not, you know, that's just a matter of survival. Uh, uh, the way he talked, it was a, you know, comical story that the, that mule didn't want to be recaptured by the Indians. Uh, <laughs> he might end up in the cook pot. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say he's he deep in the brush hiding? <laughs> yeah, that mule was in the, in, in the brush hiding, too. <laughs> And this uh, McKenna, his name was James McKenna, in the book it's called Black Range Tales, uh, if anybody didn't catch that. And it's kind of a journal of uh, life in the Gila wilderness. Before it was the Gila wilderness, it was when it was uh, still pretty wild. He's going to hit your... Yeah. Oh. Go back over. Sonny's doing roller oh. tricks. Sonny, you're on me. Watch it. Get up. Come on. Sonny. Oh, my goodness. He stretches out and rolls. Yeah. But, uh, if you like that kind of uh, reading about this part of the country or the western part of the country, it, it's a good, uh, to me it's a good book. And uh, mainly because uh, it describes a lot of the territory and a lot of the geography. And I'm kind of interested in geography uh, or, you know, the land, uh, what it's like to travel through it. Uh, You know, it gives you a sense of uh, what they had to go through to travel through it on horse or on, on foot. But that's the, that's the uh, story about that. There was a fellow by the name of Baxter in that book that he talked about. And I believe uh, up at White Oaks where we go sometimes, a little old mining town north, north and east of here back in the mountains, it was originally the area was uh, prospected by three men. Uh, one of them was named Baxter, and that might have been the, I never did really research it, but it might have been the Baxter that ended up over in the Gila, because a lot of them did when uh, things got started getting populated on this side of the state, they would uh, leave, uh, especially the old mountain men, and end up over in the Gila. It was kind of one of the last wild areas, other than Alaska. Uh, and, and the Gila still is pretty wild. Yeah, it's, it's a big area. It's about five... I think it's about 500,000 square acres, 500,000 acres. There's uh, water. And it's got lots of water. There's three forks of the Gila River, and the middle fork, the east fork, and the west fork. We've, we've camped on, the, I guess, the east fork and the west fork. And a lot of people uh, trail in, pack in. They pack in to that. Uh, we've never packed into it because it's a real popular area. Uh, I know people that have. Uh, I started to uh, on the Middle Fork 
you can find it on the brochures on the Forest Service uh, wilderness maps and stuff and uh, information on it. The middle fork goes in about from the headquarters where you first go from the trailhead, it goes in about 40 some miles, which that doesn't seem like a long ways, but it just crisscrosses the, the middle fork of the Gila. And there's about a hundred crossings, you just back and forth across the water, and it's it's not real deep except at flo uh, in flood times. It yeah, it's, it's real bad. Uh, and then, uh, if they go on a long trip, you know, it, uh, they'll go quite a ways in and then cross over the mountains and come back on the West Fork, and the West Fork comes right back to the about the same point in the same area. Dogs are a wonderful yeah. tool. They are to scoot the tourists out of the way. <laughs> or bears. <laughs> Yeah, our bears. Yeah. Uh, they uh, they've kept us up at night a few times. Uh, yeah, they. Uh, uh, yeah, we was camping in one place, and man, the dogs come out barking. It's like, ooh, whatever was out there didn't come close. Must have left. Yeah, we left the tent open that night because they kept wanting to go out and sniff around. They wouldn't, and uh, whatever it was uh, left, there was a, not too far from our campsite. Of, uh, the next day, I found an old uh, carcass of a part of a carcass of an yeah, elk. Yeah, let's camp by the carcass. <laughs> yeah, well, so. I didn't know it was there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So something was probably feeding off of that. Yeah. Uh, but they told it. They didn't leave our campsite, but the dogs was out there telling it. You know, like yeah. get out of here. That, uh, that, uh, that's, that's enough. Yeah, that's I, I got, uh, and I, I think I told it before, but I'll say it for another time. Uh, this man was out in the desert, and he come up on us, and he couldn't see the dogs, he could see us. The brush is, you know, tall. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but when he come up on us, oh. them dogs, even Tiger, rah, rah, boy, they attack him like, rah, rah. his hands went up in the air like. They didn't attack him. No, I mean, they surrounded him. They surrounded him. Yeah, and his hands went up in the air. I thought, yeah, you didn't know we had dogs. Well, we were trying to get away. You know, we seen him from a distance. I'll tell you that another time. Okay. But there, there's more to it than what. Yeah. Well, it then they they attacked him by surrounding him. Let's say that they yeah. didn't bite him or nothing. They didn't bite him, but it's it, it scared him, and boy, his hands went up. Well, he was afraid someone's gonna bite his hand, so his hands went right up in the air. Yeah. I'm glad I just bought these new needles. <laughs> yeah, they're breaking on you. I don't like that. Well, that was an old one. That's the old original. Oh, was it the old one? Yeah. We've used that a lot on saddles. Yeah, we just had to pick up some the other, last time we went to town that uh, Hobby Lobby and picked up some sewing leather sewing needles. I'm glad we did that. Well, I better let you go. Bill's going to start all over again on that. Yeah, so. the first time. <laughs> We're just not doing much today, just sitting around talking, so... I thought I'd share it with you. So thanks for watching from Out West Homestead. Bye. And, and if anybody knows a program, uh, editing program, a editing program, I hope you let me know. I should like try some. I like an easy one if I can find it, but if not, I'll have to work on it and learn it. So I appreciate it. Bye.